So good morning everyone, welcome to our workshop, uh, Automatic Bug Reporting for Dummies. My name is Martin Kutlak, this is Mirek Suhi, and we will guide you through this uh, workshop together. Uh, if you would have a problem or a question, just raise your hand and Mirek, Mirek will try to uh, help you with it. Uh, and before we jump in, I would like to ask you, uh, how many of you uh, know what's ABRT or ever uh, okay. nice thank you free hands Not <laughs> so at first I will tell you something about the EBRT and uh, the components on the EBRT and after this theory I will uh, try to show you some commands that you might not be aware of in EBRT and what can you do and uh, later we will try to uh, create an event, a custom event that can help you uh, collect some information for your applications. So, yeah, before we start, uh, you will need these three uh, packages. You should install them before the workshop. Uh, I will use some of them. The will crash is our testing package that has some commands that you can create core dumps or uh, Python exceptions in Java uh, exceptions. Yeah, I can show you. So if you have the package installed, the will crash, you can just do uh, will and there's like several different commands that you can try. I can, for example, I can try the will segfault which will create a core dump. Yeah. Uh, and let's start with the ABRT stack. The ABRT co consists of two components. One of, the, one of them is client applications and the other one is services. The client application is usually run on your laptop or server or, or somewhere. And the uh, ABRT or the client application consists of the ABRT. Uh, if you have a uh, desktop, uh, you probably have GNOME ABRT. And also ABRT uses two libraries. One of them is uh, LibReport and other one is Satir. The services that ABRT provides is the ABRT analytics uh, server, which was formerly known as a FAF, but we decided to remove it to uh, group together the branding and also the retrace server. I will talk about the ABRT analytics and the retrace server and also about the ABRT Gnome ABRT uh, later. So first let's start with the ABRT. You probably know this logo you might have saw some notification if something crashed on your system. Uh, and the EBRT provides some command line interfa interface for the EBRT. Uh, you can uh, you can try it. Uh, well, we can try it later. And also EBRT provides some demons. Uh, those usually run in background and try to catch the uh, the, the problems that happen on your system and also the uh, stack traces. You can install some add-ons for languages and uh, different runtimes error, runtime errors. Uh, ABRT can can catch Python, C, C++, C++ Java, Ruby, or kernel loops uh, problems. ABRT also provides some data processing uh, components and also the EBRT is uh, integrated in the cockpit. If you have cockpit on your system or if you don't, uh, you can try to uh, open uh, the cockpit. If you, if you don't know, it's uh, on your local host. Usually the port is 1990. Uh, and if you go to the logs and choose service uh, ABRT notification. You can see 
uh, you can see some of the crashes that ABRT uh, catched. And if you click uh, one of the crashes, you'll get just the basic uh, journal information, but they are set up with the problem info. And that shows you what ABRT would normally show you with uh, information about the crash. And there's also more uh, detailed information where you can see, uh, for example, the core back trace from the core dump or different, uh, 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 another different um, files. And also there's, uh, uh, you can report the problems for the, from the cockpit. I've already reported the problem. So it shows me that uh, the problem was reported and there's uh, actually a uh, link to the problem. If I open it, which I already have, uh, oh, sorry. Oh, and also, can you sh see from the back seats? Okay. Oh. Well, well, I think this is the problem actually. So, when you report it, uh, the ABRT sends something which we called micro reports, which is just basic information about the crash. It's usually. Uh, it usually looks like this is the core backtrace from the problem and uh, it also has from which system it arrived, uh, the architecture of the system that uh, the crash happened and uh, also the versions which, uh, which the package, uh, from which the, pack the crash came. And also you have, uh, if you are a maintainer of the package that crashed or the component, you can uh, associate the micro reports or the reports with the bugzillas. Uh, I've already did that and this is the bugzilla and if I scroll up uh, the ABRT uh, adds the link back to the problem and when this, and when you associate this bug and try to, uh, or the ABRT catches the bug and you report it, uh, it actually sends you back the information that the problem is already reported to Bugzilla. Yes. Yes. There is one entry for secrets. Um, how would you expect this information? There is an entry for what? Secret. There is you know you know the one entry. So um, I'm I'm asking because of the door of thirty one uh, there will be a switch from secret version one to version two. Mm -hmm. Uh, I actually don't know that right now. I think we get it somehow from Prox. Uh, it looks like it's just the dump of the file in Prox yeah. C group, so. Yeah, but I will make an also a little check uh, how it works with uh, C, name, uh, uh, C groups uh, version 2. Uh, so we will be prepared. Thanks for the note. Thanks. Yeah, thank you. Uh, yeah, that was the cockpit integration. So let's continue. Uh, we have the GNOME ABRT. The GNOME ABRT is the graphical interface for ABRT. You probably know it. Uh, you can see the crashes that ABRT reported and uh, see the de details just as in the cockpit. And you can report the problems to different uh, platforms like Bugzilla. You can also send mails or if you have CentOS, you can send the mails, uh, the reports to Mantis. 
which is Bugzilla for CentOS. You can actually can try this right now. So if you run some build crash, so with setfault on GNOME or uh, KDA, uh, there should appear a pop-up button uh, from a notification uh, area. And if you click on that, uh, it will get you to GNOME ABRT. And that was the client part of the ABRT, and then we have the services that ABRT provides, and one of them is ABRT Analytics. I've talked about a little bit about the problems, but I will try to repeat it. So the ABRT creates micro reports and sends them, if you have ABRT uh, auto reporting enabled, it sends them to uh, ABRT Analytics. ABRT Analytics process this micro report and creates uh, what we called report. Later, ABRT Analytics from these reports try to group them together by similarity and creates problems. Uh, if you open the, this link and I will show you some problem that I have already prepared, you can see this is already the problem that was created by, by ABRT Analytics. If, if you scroll down, you can go to the different uh, report tabs. And if I just quickly go through them, I can actually see that the only thing that's changing uh, is the version of the Java. And there's also option to do a backtrace diff and I can show you now, hopefully, if the, yeah. So these four lines change. So ABRT uh, analytics try to group them together. So these, uh, these problems are together. Yep. Uh, ABRT analytics also provides you with the statistics of the incoming reports can see what's uh, crashing in your application and basic in uh, overview of the component, uh, what's, uh, what type of crashes do you have. We have this retrace server on the Fedora project running, but you can also create your own instance. We have a Docker image uh, available. Uh, if you run Docker uh, pool, ABRT and the FAF image, uh, and also ABRT uh, Postgres instance from us. You can set up the FAF and report the crashes to your instance and see what's happening on your system, and you don't have to send it to a retrace server. And let's continue. Then we have the retrace server. The retrace server provides the remote retracing of core dumps. Usually when something crashes and it creates a core dump, the core dump contains just pointers to memory and it's not really human readable. And if you want to make it human readable, you have to download a lot of debug packages and it's not just for your application, but, but also the dependencies. So you have like huge amount of uh, data that you have to download and find. So the Retrace server tries to solve this by allowing you sending the core dump to our server, which then uh, processes this core dump and sends you back the backtrace that's in human readable uh, format. So it should save you time. You don't have to look for these different packages and also it should save you the uh, storage or the space on your system because these debug info packages are usually huge. And that was the theory part. And now we can continue with the workshop. Uh, if you have the ABRT installed, uh, I can go to the terminal and the first one that I would like to show you is the uh, the basic command, if you have the newest version of 
or the latest version of the ABRT, you, sh you can do just the uh, ABRT and it will list you the crashes that you have uh, on your system. And this is just basic overview what kind of uh, crashes do you have from which kind of components and when these happened and also the I can. Is this enough? Yeah, yeah. Okay. So if you want to try it, you can run the EBRT. It also, if you have, if you want more detailed information, you can do EBRT list, and this will show you what uh, or where did you send the reports, and also. If, uh, if the report was already reported, it will show you that it was sent to this, or it was, uh, if, if you report it to Bugzilla, it will show you the link to Bugzilla, and you will know that you already uh, reported this problem. And EBRT should prevent you from already reporting the reported problems, and I will show you later. Another command is EBRT info and if you type it just like that the EBRT info it will show you the detailed information about the latest crash but you can also select it, the problem by the ID so I can for, for example choose this this one and it will show me more detailed information it's not uh, all the information but uh, it adds the command line and some more information like the package that it came from uh, then there is a command which you probably don't know about and it's ABRT uh, GDB and if you again select the ID which was this one it will okay this one is not oh it's Java so actually the latest one is GDB or core dump it will start the GDB and if you have debug info packages it will already show you the human readable uh, format But if you don't have uh, if you don't have the debug info packages, you can uh, execute ABRT debug info install, and this will try to install the debug info packages from the build IDs that ABRT collects from the core dump. And I already have the packages installed, so it also created the backtrace for me during this process uh, if you want to get the backtrace from the retrace server and you don't want to report it you can execute abrt retrace command uh, I've already have the backtrace so it will tell me that I've already uh, backtrace created and asked me if I want to show it, which I don't want now. So I will do, I will force the retrace to execute and it will ask me if I want to do the local retracing, which will try to double on the debug, debug info packages or I can use the, or I can use the retrace server and send, send the command to uh, core dump to retrace server. <coughs> I can try it now. It will take some time. I already have, have it somewhere, yeah. So this is then the output of the command. It will send the core dump, then process it, and after a while it will generate the backtrace and send me back the human readable backtrace and then you can use the ABRT 
report command that will start Ooh, too many sessions opened well live demo <laughs> But you can try it on your system, hopefully. Or there's nothing broken in mine. And it will it should show you uh, where you want to report it and then ask you for Bugzilla ID, uh, Bugzilla login and passwords and you can re uh, report the problem to Bugzilla. Um, Yeah, and if you don't want to, or if you have the debug info packages installed and you just want to see what's uh, what crashed, you can run the ebrt gdb and then uh, continue with the gdb uh, directly and you don't have to, uh, you don't have to run the gdb and find the core dump, you can just do this and you have it ready for you to debug the crash. Yeah, that's information. And now we can try to create the event, the custom event. So if you want to try it with me, you can create a new file. You will need uh, to be a privileged user. So, for example, if you create file block event dot com dot uh, conf, which I already have, or should I? Uh, And I don't have it. And paste this. Well, I will have to type it. But uh, first, I can probably uh, explain you what this does. At the event, it's a uh, it's a word that ABRT tries to find in these uh, files, and it then executes when when this notify happens and the notify happens when something crashes and the ABRT shows you the notification. There is also possibility to create the event during the pro uh, post processing of the crash, but uh, the notify is probably better. Then you can select something like component or you have more options, you can actually choose also a package version or other different uh, options. And the the other options are come from this problem directory, you can choose package name for example which is will crash or if you want to match package um, version you can also do that and it will try to match this version but there's also opportunity for uh, regap regraps uh, ex regular expressions and it will go through the file and try to find the matches in that file and then there's second part of it of this and that's the echo line uh, 
if you want to put something or uh, create some kind of file that or f find some kind of information about your component and we don't collect it you can do you can for example copy some log files or execute some kind of command that will create a new file and it will create this file in the problem directory uh, where the the ebrt collects these crashes and during the reporting it will add this file to the report and i've already did this before so when you send the bug report to the bugzilla and select that you want to s uh, send the send the file that you've created it will abrt will include it in the report and for example this one that i've created before uh, is the flock file and it will show you the hello from frog uh, flock uh, in budapest so if you want to try it yourself you can do it now and if you will have a problem with it i can try to assist you the the scripts should be written in bash and the first line the event should be uh, there sh shouldn't be no space before that but the uh, the following line the echo should be spaced or tapped or uh, just commented and it will then execute these commands in uh, in order yeah this is the different different uh, different times when the events events can happen one of them is post create then there is the notify and the selecting the values is the the first one is the key and wall it's it, it will uh, try to match it yes yes i forgot to mention so we collect just basic information and you might as a package in, uh, ma maintainer it might not be enough for you to debug the problem so you can create this event and collect whatever information that you want from the crash and it should uh, it will help you to debug uh, the the problems and the issue is that you can have special hardware let's say so you can uh, get some special information from kernel about the special hardware or you want to integrate with your uh, continuous integration so the event can contain everything so you can like notify your custom uh, continuous integration system about this uh, this crash uh, or you can send uh, SMS uh, thing on a uh, uh, pager, whatever. Wh whatever you need, you can you can be using those custom events. So it's both for for uh, distribution packages and for local stuff. Yeah, okay. but by by default, uh, a BRT. Uh, software, but 
you can customize it in a BRT config or Liverpool config. Uh, so, so you can say whether you want to get mm, uh, threshes from non-package software as well. Uh, and then you can upload it to, to ABRT analytics or to your uh, detection system of your own. Any more questions or is anyone trying to create their own event? Yes. Uh, when you do this, uh, it will create the file and it will uh, create the file in the problem directory. You can see the problem directory if you execute uh, ebrt info and this path. It will show you where the ebrt store the problem details. Can you go to the directory? Yes, I will. And if I show the content, or what's the what the directory contains, you can see the information. Uh, and so, if you create your custom event, uh, you will have there the file log event as well, and all those uh, files are quite small and they contain all those information, which, by, by the way, was uh, very visible on that uh, 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 the cockpit uh, page. Uh, so, for example, the C group contains only information we get from the C groups, command line components, and so And here is the flock file. And these events run under a privileged user, so you should be careful what you do with the events. Yes, I uh, read. So maybe a quick comment on this part. You're putting distribution files in PC. Actually, right now we have uh, config files from both locations. They are identical, uh, so right now we are working on having the defaults in jewelry. Uh, and so we will probably keep the config files in ITC uh, as well, but they will be under the uh, command like this override for the details.
Yes. I think yes, but I'm not sure, so... Yes, so the question was uh, if ABRT is uh, in Ubuntu as well? Yeah. Well, right now the ABRT is only in uh, the Fedora, CentOS, and the RHEL uh, world, but there was, uh, we, or we have an issue open that we want to support also the different different platforms like Debian, Ubuntu, and SUSE. Do you know what we can be used in our platform? Because Ubuntu has some kind of error reporting because I mean, we have the fact that Ubuntu is as good as Ubuntu reported. I actually don't know. Uh, actually, like, uh, the reporting is one of the things which is useful, but what I found uh, uh, most useful are the micro reports. Uh, uh, I will show them in a moment. Uh, uh, and for that, you have to run ABRT analytics service. So, so just having the package available there one thing, but then you will have to run the, the service, which is other things. So we run the service for Fedora, and Fedora infrastructure, uh, but running it for Debian, OpenSUSE, and Andriva, that's beyond our scope. But definitely, uh, we provide, uh, as Martin mentioned, we provide the container uh, for ABRT analytics, so it's very easy to deploy your own container uh, and uh, gather your own uh, crashes. So if you are running your enterprise environment and you are operating bank or something like that, and you don't want to go your crashes outside of your company, you can run your own ABRT analytics server uh, and, uh, and collect your crashes in general. Can you, can you elaborate more about those micro reports? How to enable them? Uh, and how they and so show some examples from, from analytics? Uh, so th there is an EBRT command called EBRT reporting, uh, sorry, auto reporting. And if you execute it, it will uh, tell you if you have it enabled or disabled. If you want to enable, enable it, you just type one or two or enabled, and it should enable it. And this one, uh, the EBRT uh, auto reporting uh, means that the micro reports will be sent to the location where you want to uh, report them. By default, that's the retrace server that Fedora project that org uh, slash fav. Uh, and what did you want to sh show? Yeah. So it's enabled by default. So yeah. uh, actually everyone in Fedora, if they have some crash, uh, it's automatically reported to ABRT analysis, Fedora infrastructure. Uh, and this is uh, some examples. So the, the most interesting part is even if you are a maintainer of some package in Fedora 
and you, you think your package is uh, working well because you are not receiving any bugzilla, it's worth checking uh, IBRT analytics server. Uh, yeah. um, you can get your you, from Fedora packages, and if you check like for the bash uh, path, it will navigate you to the uh, directly to the component uh, of bash in in uh, IBRT analytics. Uh, but this is just for. Uh, this is you have and plug. Yeah, and also. And even if you think you didn't have many bugzillas, you can see that there is a lot of crashes where your component is involved. For example, we have like uh, nearly 10,000 crashes uh, in, in, in function BGP here, uh, and so on. Uh, yeah, uh, so you can see uh, how many times it occurs on which architectures uh, and in the statistic tab you can even create some ANSI graphs so it's even visible uh, in which version this start happening uh, and in which version it stopped actually happening. Uh, so for example for uh, RHEL we are creating internal reports using ABRT and we are suggesting uh, developers that, hey, uh, you have this bug open, uh, this is associated with this information in, uh, in ABRT analytics. And it stopped happening, so you probably fix it uh, a side effect of some other fix, so you can wave it as a fix because it's not happening anymore. So it can give you a really nice way how to solve some bugs uh, really cheaply. Yeah, those are those graphs. Can I ask, just ask you, uh, did I convince you to try and create some custom report for your application so EBRT can collect it and help you with the debugging? So, um, I guess, uh, uh, more, more general comment. Uh, mm -hmm. So, in the, like, uh, three years ago, uh, when I got a board uh, by Zilla, I had a profile and logs. Mm -hmm. And now I get no profile, no logs, and I look at the bug reports, and they are not useful. I, there's nothing I can do just based on the uh, backtrace that, that is there. Mm -hmm. Especially uh, when it's a memory corruption. If I had a core file, I could often figure out what is going on. But just on the based on the backtrace, it's there's nothing I can do. So at some point, I ask people, okay, can you give me? files and then people say oh we cannot give you profiles it's security sensitive oh. and then I write oh no, no it's, it's okay it's okay this program contains no uh, security sensitive information at all you can give the profile maybe send it to me by mail and then I get the profile and then in the meantime two months has passed and uh, okay, the profile is gone so the usability of the reports has gone down and it would be so nice to, to and have the logs in the Bugzilla's, the core files. Maybe maybe you could whitelist programs which contain no uh, user information. Uh, and uh, third thing is that the Bugzilla's are often uh, mm. uh, private because there is like key yes, uh, option, which is very annoying. It's also annoying for users because users don't cannot see the reports. Oh. And I have never, never in my life seen a report that had any sensitive information. Yeah. Uh, can, can you open uh, and try to report uh, some some crash from uh, the GNOME ABRT? Uh, the, the, the problem is that uh, there is two things against each other. Like, 
what is usability of those reports, where you need as much information as much possible. And on the other hand, uh, there is a privacy of everybody involved, well, uh, and especially if you are reporting something from your company, uh, you probably don't want to leak anything suspicious at all. So we actually have whitelisted inform uh, things which are sensitive, like uh, Amazon credentials. So if there is an uh, 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 operating environment variables, uh, something AWS underscore, uh, we, will, we will wipe it away uh, so it doesn't leak. Uh, and we have quite a long list of, of this whitelist information we should not report. Uh, but when you try to report it, uh, there is a, you have option uh, to select and you see what's going to be your report, including that private uh, checkbox. So uh, it's up to user to decide, is this report private? And if they check yes, then Yes, they think it's a private. <laughs> uh, I'm not sure whether the right thing is like uh, pop up several other dialog boxes like, do you really think it's private? Yes, but we don't think so. Yes, it is private. Uh, but yeah, it is private. Well, so No, no, we don't. We don't. Because some of them can be huge and there's a limit in Bugzilla. Okay. 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 Also, there are also no logs. I mean, why did the logs go away? What logs do you mean? Well, there was a problem that usually in the in the waterlock there, or maybe it's that we have just basic 
we try to match the name of the, the package or the component that crashed and try to find it in the log and it's I think three minutes back uh, from the crash that happened and during that time there usually weren't that many logs or useful logs and Uh, yeah, actually DNF or if we create the the, the event and I can uh, oh. If if the if you can uh, attach logs from journal, right? And DNF sort of does this with this. No, it's actually it's useful. Great suggestion. I'm, I'm really glad that we are getting this feedback. Uh,
this uh, heuristics detecting whether to flag a report as private. And this one is really overly sensitive definitely because it's uh, catching some nonsenses. If you know. And then you really get three times asked <laughs> whether you want to submit the report as non-private. And if you submit it as private as by default, then you cannot even see the back in Bugzilla. So if it happens again, again, uh, issue and you still want to be reported but you don't want to be uh, assigned in analytics uh, to, to Ruby. Well the problem is that typically it's like uh, it's reported against Ruby but Ruby is executing some code which is typically living in some user user home and the user is experimenting with such code and so on. So I would love to be able to avoid these reports at all because it's like really my code and I'm doing a mistake, why don't you get reported uh, into, into some somewhere into Bugzilla because uh, really the, the bug itself exhibits in, in Ruby so it's like rightfully reported against Ruby but the issue is somewhere else. You are getting this is a such a situation you are describing this uh, Fault or uh, uh, you get even tracebacks? Yeah, it might set, it might set fault because uh, there is some invalid memory access or something like that. But set fault is always a problem. Yeah, it's no matter what you are trying. But it's, it's like you are you are playing like uh, you are not using if you are using using the Ruby via Ruby you are not uh, using the Ruby. Yeah, that's that's um, Ruby FFI uh, issue. Yeah, it should not land on no, your file. No, that's not true. Because it's like it, it's once you start to use FFI, it's like if you are coding in, uh, in in C and you have access to all the memory and so on. So it's like it might be problem of some industry, but uh, that should not be reported into into Bugzilla. Yeah, the, the same happens. Yeah, yeah, I'm saying that's problem. It should not be reported against Python. It should be report, uh, report against the binary. In this with case, uh, FFI. No, it's a problem. Yeah, but it, so if it is not package in Pandora and you are configured not to report versions in uh, that's, not, that's not true. We are using interpreter, which is actually, actually you are like running a script which is run by Ruby, which is packaged in uh, in Pandora, but it's using some library which is third party library and it makes uh, the Ruby crash. So yes, it yes, and you are last in the back trace. So we. Uh, claim that it's your fault, but it's actually not correct, I'm aware of that. So, so I'm saying that it should be reported, but not to you. But you can even run, uh, it maybe it should not be reported because the user runs his own script somewhere from uh, user, user uh, somewhere from his home, which, which is the actual script which is executed and it should not be reported at all because the bug itself is in the script. And 
So I'm asking if there are really specific to FFI is the most often report I get. So if I know that FFI is loading, I would love to ignore, ignore uh, the bugs entirely because uh, this is really, using FFI is really dangerous if, if you don't know what you are doing. Uh, I think it's actually possible to exit the reporting if you match it against uh, some uh, against some string. You can uh, quit the reporting, and it shouldn't be reported. It, the ABRT should stop report the reporting process. But I've never tried it, so. No. So it appears, but if the user wants to report it, it appears it, with failure or something. Yeah. I think that I should show. Or is there anything that I should show? Do you have some feedback from the Python board? Oh, uh, Are you receiving IBRT bugs from us?
and yeah if you have any issues or problems you can send us an email or try to contact us on the IRC or just file a github issue and also we have a blog with some articles about the stuff we do so you can check it out yes Uh, I don't think that's possible because we catch uh, the crashes or we try to catch the crashes from systemd journal and But it won't be catched by EBRT uh, like because yeah, the, the first issue is the catching the and then there is the reporting and the uh, somehow to how, how to do that. This would be really awesome because many many tools do this. There are exit calls above one hundred which have just a special semantics so who can easily wrap around it and understand what's going on. In this case of Podman, for instance, the image does not uh, or does not exist on the registry. This is nothing fatal. The user should be able to resolve it on their own. But if it's something that relates to the configuration of the host, maybe something
I would like to uh, somehow mimic uh, sentry behavior as well. So right now we are fetching all those exceptions from from system. Uh, only those are uh, uh, I'm not sure if you are ever sentry, but in sentry we can like say include uh, sentry and provide some key and then it's reported and you get just fresh just from your application. So I say okay we have all those reporting on a place, uh, services on a place. So uh, if you are not interested in as administrative about all applications or about all stack, uh, you can initiate the report from the application. So this is exactly what you are asking for. Say, so, okay, if some exceptional situation uh, happens, then I would like to get the report somewhere. Just be careful not to send all executables like <laughs> well, but we will get a lot of reports for the false so. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. the, the, the wrapper should be specific, it should be enabled to go for the five years of the thing. Yeah. It's for a specific goal. Uh, ABRT actually doesn't right now support flatbacks, so. Uh, is there any plan to support uh, Yes, we have plans to. Yeah, uh, I think Ernest has done yeah. the investigation, spent some time on that. Uh, on our blog, we have, uh, can you open our blog? Uh, there's some entry about flatbacks, and we end up like reporting four, six issues against flat, flatbacks. Uh, which needs to be resolved in Flatpak first. Uh, uh, so if, if you want to read more about it, you can, you can, you can hear. So there are some technical issues uh, blocking the road. I'm curious how you can get data proof for, for, for Flatpak. No, you can't. Yeah, that's one of the issues that you are trying to so come up with. No, we wouldn't. Wouldn't uh, we? Didn't figure it, this out yet. We have plans how to, or. or there was some in investigation by Ernestas how to catch these uh, crashes, but proceeding with the debug info that's another issue, and we didn't touch that yet. So in the future. It was not priority for us yet. Uh, I don't want to push it really hard. Uh, we actually work on. Containers. Uh, so, for example, in OpenShift, we are able to get our uh, crashes uh, from uh, initially just from Python uh, and, and, and for dance. Uh, if your application is running in container and there is no ABRT, uh, if you have just uh, installed package container exception logger, uh, which is a very thin, uh, it's like kilobytes or something like that. Uh, it will uh, get your uh, phrase back out of the container into the host and we are able to uh, show it in, uh, in somewhere in OpenShift, right now in Kibana, so not nicely for you, uh, human, uh, but we will work on uh, OpenShift console, show it someone nicely that your container is crashing 
because in OpenShift you don't not you don't need to even notice it because OpenShift is so smart that your application crash, the desktop crash, uh, kill the bot uh, and spin another one, so it's tra uh, transparent for you. But if it happens five times during one minute, you may start getting problems. So, so we would like to show some nice icons in OpenShift dashboard by showing, okay, this container is crashing quite a lot. So you may investigate it and check, check the logs. I have a very pragmatic question. Uh, how do I get notified of problems in Oh, uh, Actually, you can uh, turn on the notification if you go to the... Yeah, Yeah. I don't think we. Accept packages from RPM Fusion. I see it in, in, in the public really? reports, so I just thought that. I, I know it's a special case. Okay, can I subscribe to some component? No, it's well. We uh, pull the information from Fedora project and from the PDC, and it assigns you if you are the maintainer. It assigns you to that component, so you can do these uh, different like associating or archi archiving reports and. Yeah, but the packages that are not in Fedora, you cannot do it. Yeah, you can't. Yeah, I think I heard some uh, some people suggesting that because actually after crashing and catching the problems uh, uh, during the building in Koji or in Copper, actually great idea. Uh, we want to get these reports, uh, but yeah, you mock up the special. So I'm afraid there will be some work to do. Making notes. And
Yeah, no, <laughs> sorry, because I can actually show you we have like hundreds of them and going through them. Dude, dude. So if the infrastructure is there, yeah. uh, actually no one is checking you. So if I knock on your shoulder and ask you to check, check, check something, then you probably might do this, right? Uh, right now, yes, but actually we in past week or two uh, we discussed that we will probably wipe this feature away because no one uses it. Like, uh, you are not using it. We are not using it, uh, others are not able to because that's just for the admins, uh, so I, I don't know what to do with this feature, it just con consume storage and it's for nothing, so I think we should come with some idea here, I like to expose it to, to users, uh, uh, again, but we should be privacy here, uh, or we will probably wipe it away. Oh, well. Maybe if it was publicly available to somebody, then maybe committee could help analyze such a um, yeah. Well, the problem is that uh, well, it can contain the core dump with sensitive information. You have to decide to upload, them, upload the data, so if you yeah. Yeah, but, but I already saw Bugzilla reports with passwords to Bugzilla and... Yeah. and when you are uploading this uh, actual state, uh, if something, uh, if you think this is bu uh, bug in our tooling, you can upload it here and admins will check it and will keep it private, no one will, else will read it. But admins are not reading it actually because we don't have time for that. So we either have to change the wording uh, and involve the community to handle this. I'm not sure if we will be able to participate on that. Probably not. <laughs> Just for my like for my cases. Yeah, exactly. Yeah, so there's still option for the user to just file the bugzilla and do this manually, but yeah, that's why we have the ABRT to send the report. Well, I, I know some people who don't send the uh, core dumps to, to the retrace server and, and use the retrace, uh, retracing on their systems. But there are some issues with that as well because sometimes some of the debug infos might be still missing. Maybe a question, uh, this is related but not entirely about specific 
if I get a code file, mm -hmm. uh, I think that it includes the uh, building calls in it, so it should be possible to figure out the um, RPM name uh, from the code file always. But uh, I had trouble doing that. And, uh, because sometimes people send me code files and I need to figure out the version of the code. And uh, do you have some I don't think, or I don't. But it sounds like a good idea for Joe like to as much time which is a year to do what he will write good idea and will bring you a change in the world. But the, but the, the good idea is somehow embedded in the code file. Yes? Yeah. Thank you for everyone for coming. I hope <laughs> I hope you learned Thank something. You. Thank you.